So here we have some pasture that we're growing for some livestock. Now as it is, this pasture is looking very lush and uh, green. Now that means that these plants are photosynthesizing, uh, as we saw in um, the last video. But is there any way we can increase um, this process? Can we increase the photosynthesis rate of these plants? And by doing so, can we uh, potentially make either more food for our animals or in, in different enterprises, can we increase uh, the rate of growth and, and make a better quality product. So that's exactly what we'll be looking at today in this video. We'll be looking at how we can increase and maximize the photosynthetic potential of our plants and how that will lead to an increase in production. My name is Till Simmons and this is Agriculture Explained by AgriSol. As we know from the previous video in photosynthesis, photosynthesis is the process where plants make their own food as sugar. Now this sugar is then used in the growth and development of the plant and supplies it with energy and materials to pretty much um, build more plant material. Now as a result from that we can basically say that when we increase photosynthesis we're going to increase production as when we increase the amount the plant can grow by we'll have um, more biomass to produce. And so now the question becomes, well, how can we increase photosynthesis? Well, we can have a look firstly at the uh, chemical formula. Now we talked about this in the last video, so if you haven't seen that, make sure to check that out first. But pretty much what we'll do is we'll go through and um, see what we need. And so the idea of doing this is that we'll basically see what we need. And if there's anything uh, lacking in that, um, that's pretty much what we can increase. We could almost say this is a bit similar to baking or making a cake. If we don't have enough flour, we can only make a certain amount of um, cakes, even though we might have heaps of eggs or milk. And likewise, if we don't have many eggs, we can only make the certain amount of cakes, depending on how many eggs there are. Or say the oven isn't heated up enough. That's not gonna produce any cakes because it won't be able to take that process of cooking it. Or even more, if we only have we only have a limited amount of room in the oven, so we can only fit a certain amount of cakes in. It's the exact same idea. It's the law of minimum. So whatever you are uh, have, I guess the minimum value in, that's going to limit your production. So just like photosynthesis, we're going to need um, our um, reactants. So carbon dioxide. Carbon dioxide is needed uh, in a certain amount for the reaction to work. As we can see in this um, graph here, pretty much when we increase um, carbon dioxide concentration, now concentration is uh, the important part, when we increase the concentration, photosynthesis, uh, the rate of photosynthesis is going to increase very rapidly until it plateaus at a certain point. So um, at the moment, I believe plants actually prefer a slightly higher concentration in carbon dioxide uh, than there is in the environment at, at the moment. And in fact, some greenhouses actually increase the carbon dioxide rate uh, in the, in the uh, greenhouse so that they can uh, increase their photosynthetic rate. But generally, as farmers, we can't really do too much about this if we're going uh, pretty much not in the greenhouse. We won't be able to really change too much of the uh, carbon dioxide um, concentrations just on our farm. But nevertheless, it is still a, a factor that is involved in changing the rate of photosynthesis. Next, we need water. Uh, now, this is pretty obvious, you need to water your plants. If there's no water, it can't photosynthesize um, and it won't grow. So what can we do about that? We can water our plants, uh, making sure they have enough water or uh, holding a lot more water in our soil. So increasing our soil organic uh, matter uh, percentage or concentration in our uh, soil. That will hold more water, act as a reservoir uh, and it can um, photosynthesize more. Furthermore, we can actually get more um, water conservative or water efficient plants um, so they don't have to use as much water for this process. So next in the reaction is sunlight. Now we need a, enough sunlight to um, allow the process to um, occur. And so when we increase the light concentration, photosynthesis rates are going to increase to a point. And that the reason why it increases to a point is that it's almost similar to um, having say a fixed amount of ovens. If we only have one oven, we can only put say 10 cakes in there. Despite how much actual uh, cake mixture we have, we can only put 10 um, cakes in at a time. And that is why it plateaus as light concentration increases because our chloroplasts um, are already almost at full capacity at a certain amount of 
um, light concentration. Now you'll be able to see here there's a difference between our C3 and C4 plants. So the difference pretty much in, sim in very simple terms is that the C4 um, photosynthesis is a turboed version of C3. And there's a number of reasons uh, why, but um, there's an extra step or a couple extra steps in the C4 version which makes it more water efficient and so that allows it to increase production when the light increases as well as temperature. So it's a more water efficient uh, and light effective process. But with this, when our light concentration increases, our C4 plants are going to photosynthesize more, whereas our C3 uh, plants are still going to inc uh, increase their photosynthesis uh, rates, but not as much uh, as the C4 plants. Anyways, so that's light. We need to make sure we have light. But what we can do as farmers is that we can change our uh, plant spacing. So if we have our plants really close together, they're going to be shading each other out. Also, we've got to keep in mind uh, shading barriers. So if you have any bushland around your paddocks, if um, that causes any shade, that's going to reduce the photosynthesis um, of our plants. Now, plants are a living thing, and they use these things called enzymes to pretty much catalyze this process. But the one thing about um, enzymes is that they're uh, very responsive to temperature change. And so they require a, a certain temperature to have optimal um, production. And so temperature is also going to be a factor uh, that is really important when it comes to photosynthetic rates. And so that is, there's a sweet spot uh, for our plants to photosynthesize in at different temperatures. So our C3 plants, they're gonna have a optimal temperature below or in colder climates than our C4. And C4 are a bit more tropical, um, whereas C3 a bit more uh, temperate or in cooler environments. But this is the reason why you can't grow uh, oats in uh, the middle of summer and the reason why you can't grow corn in the middle of winter and that's just because temperature and the temperature doesn't allow these uh, different plants to grow and that's just because of the way the enzymes react to different temperatures next is probably the most important one we can change and consider as a farmer and that's the minerals needed uh, for this process. So this process is super complicated and there's a lot of moving parts There's a lot of proteins involved and there's a lot of enzymes uh, And there's a lot of minerals that are needed to produce those enzymes. So say chlorophyll um, That needs a certain amount of uh, nitrogen. If the nitrogen isn't there uh, Chlorophyll isn't going to be made by the plant, which means it's not going to photosynthesize So making sure that the plant has the right nutrients to make all of the proteins required for photosynthesis, that is really important for increasing production. And that is probably the most significant improvement we can make to our farms, that and, and water, but um, minerals can significantly increase our production. And the main ones are nitrogen, phosphorus, manganese, and iron. Now, if you make up a uh, fertilizer and apply all those, you've got a good chance of really boosting your photosynthesis and production. Not that I'm recommending it to you per se, um, because I don't know your uh, farm and your situation. Um, the best way to find out though is to get a sap analysis. So um, they can be a bit hard to come by, but pretty much you contact the lab uh, and then they will uh, give you some directions on how to get um, sap for them. And the sap test will tell you the exact nutrients that the plant are picking up. Now this is different to a soil test, which tells us what is in the soil, but not what the plant is picking up. So there's a, there's a big difference between those two, um, as some of these nutrients are actually in a form that the plant can't pick up or actually can't utilize when it's absorbed. So using a sap analysis, I'd uh, very much recommend, and this is building off John Kemp's uh, work from Advancing Eco Agriculture. I definitely uh, recommend checking them out. They're um, really good information but basically we want to make sure we get the right nutrients in our plant so that they can produce the proteins and enzymes that are used in this very complex reaction now at last we have the genetic potential uh, of our plants now this is actually another really significant one uh, and this pretty much allows the plants to set the stage for everything else to occur so for example if we have um, a variety of corn uh, with a really thin leaf and then another variety of corn with a wide leaf the wider leaf is going to photosynthesize more just because there is a um, greater amount of area on the leaf, which means the plant can facilitate photosynthesis more. And so it's those kind of changes as well as uh, making the plant more water efficient or any other factor that will improve photosynthesis. So making sure you've got a uh, good, I guess, genetics and making sure that you're getting good genetics and good varieties um, of plants to grow.
So what will this do for our plants? Now, like I said at the beginning of the video, it's gonna increase photosynthesis, it's gonna increase production because it's gonna increase uh, the amount of sugars it can produce. So what does that mean for us as farmers? It means we can uh, increase our production. We can either make more hay or more pasture for animals to uh, feed off. It can increase our crops and it also produces a better quality of crop too. So when increasing our sugar content, we're gonna make the plant pretty much more healthy. And as a result of that, it's gonna become less susceptible to insect and disease attacks. And so now that the plant isn't struggling to um, produce enough energy to survive, it can then focus on um, protein production. And this is again, building off um, John Kemp's work. But again, you're gonna build a more a healthy plant. Now, one more thing to mention, we don't want to be stressing our plants because when we stress our plants, they're not going to be uh, producing as effectively. So that's like uh, driving over them um, in a vehicle. Say so you go to check one side of the paddock, you drive over your plants, that is going to decrease um, the uh, growth potential of our plants. So in terms of increasing production, we've got to make sure we're, we're keeping our plants healthy, happy, and we can do that firstly by making sure we're fulfilling all their requirements uh, for photosynthesis, and then secondly, we're not disturbing them and causing stress. So that's it, that is how we can increase photosynthesis. This is the first step that we look at uh, when we consult to growers. We look at maximizing, uh, maximizing photosynthesis so that we can establish a healthy plant and then improve other aspects of the plant. If you like this video, make sure to check out some of our other videos. We've got some more on plant production, we have some on animal production, and we also have some on regenerative agriculture. I believe moving forward in agriculture, uh, regenerating our farms will be a massive way we can increase production and most importantly, increase profitability for our farms. So if you need help with that, getting uh, started in your regenerative journey, uh, or you want some uh, help optimizing your regenerative farm, uh, send us a message at Agrisol uh, and we'll be uh, keen to work with you. Thanks again for watching. My name is Teal Simmons from Agrisol and this is Agriculture Explained.